Hello and welcome to part two of this Swift UI to-do list tutorial. Today we're going to be mostly focused on filtering our to-do list. So initially I'm going to show you how we can create a date scroller and go forwards and backwards between the days and therefore only show to-do list items that are relevant for today or tomorrow or the next day. And then in the last part of the tutorial we are going to implement a picker which allows the user to display only completed items or if they wanted to look at only to-do items. And so it's really two different ways that you can filter your list. One with the fetch spec and core data and the second being just filtering the list. Cool, so picking back up our to-do list project we have made it so that you can create a new task item as well as edit and schedule a time. However, it's not that obvious whether or not we have scheduled a time for any given task. So if we have scheduled a time, we are going to display that in our task cell. So firstly, I'm just going to close off a bunch of these files and then yeah, navigate to our task cell Swift file. We can add something below our task item name. We are just going to say if our past task item is not completed and it has a scheduled time so the scheduled time boolean is set to true we're going to add in a spacer and then a text our text we want to show our due date but we only want to show the time of our due date so we need to head into our task item extension and create a function which returns only the time out of our due date so to do this i'm just going to return an empty string at the bottom if let due is equal to our due date, we're going to create a new date formatter, just calling it date formatter. Our date formatter date format, we're just going to give it hours, minutes, and then the AM or PM is the little A. Finally, we just want to return date formatter string from our due date. And we're also, while we're here, we're just going to create a function calling it is overdue. And we're just going to use our if let statement of our due date, just making sure that that's not nil. And we're going to return if our task item is not completed, it has a scheduled time and the due date is less than the current date and time. And then otherwise, if we don't have a due date, we're just going to return false. Below our is overdue, we're just going to create a function that returns a color, which is overdue. So if it's overdue, we're going to have a red text. And if it is not, then we're just going to make the text black. So now we can make our text use our due date time only, just calling that off our past task item. The font is footnote, so just pretty small. Foreground color is going to be our off our task item, our overdue color that we just created. And then we're just going to give it a little bit of padding, which is horizontal. Cool. So let's build and run and see we've got those two tasks there with due dates of 7.45 and they were both in red because at the time of recording, it's about 7.51. So those two tasks are in the past, therefore being overdue. But if we create a new empty task with no scheduled time, you can see that it's hidden our time completely. And if we change this task of wash car to the future, 757, you can see that the text color has changed to black. Cool, so that's all good and well if we just had like one day's to-do list we only ever cared about today. But what if we wanted to schedule to-do list item for the future? If you've seen the tutorial I made on how to build a calendar view, you'll no doubt notice that there's something pretty similar about the date scroller that we're about to create. We're going to head into our task list view. We're gonna create a new Swift UI file, which is called date scroller. Our date scroller is gonna need our date holder, so our environment object. And inside our task list view, just above our Z stack, we want to insert our date scroller. So it's gonna sit just above our list. Um, we're gonna give it a little bit of padding as well as our environment object. We're gonna pass that through our date holder. We're gonna put our date holder inside our model. Our date holder is gonna need a published variable called date. So this is gonna be the date that we are looking at. And we're just gonna initialize that to be today's date. We're gonna create a function called move dates, which takes days as well as context. So our NS managed object context. And then we're gonna say let calendar of type calendar equal to the current calendar. And then we're gonna say date is equal to calendar date by adding day value of our days that we're gonna get passed through to our date that we're saving as our published variable. Heading back into our date scroller, we're gonna copy paste out our, our view context from another view. And so inside the body of our date scroller, we're gonna insert a stack with a spacer. Below the spacer, we're gonna add in a button. This button is gonna have an action of move back, which we're gonna just create below. So function, uh, move back, and we're gonna say inside here, so just giving our button some curly brackets to stop the error. We're gonna say with animation, we're going to call our date holder move dates. So that function we just created in our date holder. 
We're gonna give it minus one and pass it through our view context. And then we're gonna copy paste down that function, just calling it move forward, where we remove the minus. So we're gonna move forward one day or one day back, depending on which button is pressed. And so inside our button, we're gonna give it an image of a left arrow, image scale large, font is font title weight bold. And then we can copy paste down that and just change it to move forward as well as changing the arrow direction. In between the button, we want to display the text, so the date that's selected. So our text is gonna be our date holder date formatted. We're gonna give it a font of title as well as the text we're gonna make bold. Animation is none and the frame, we're gonna give it a max width of infinity. Date formatted, we might actually create our own date formatter for our date holder date. So I'm just gonna create a function calling it date formatted, which we're gonna take our text value and return it here. We're gonna create a date formatter exactly the same as we did in our task item extension, except this date format is gonna be days, months, and years. And then we just re again return our date formatter from string and giving it our date holder date. Cool, so let's give our date scroll uh, a quick test to make sure that that's all working. So yeah, we've got our date in the middle and we can scroll left and right. One thing that has caught my attention here is that our new task button is kind of just floating in the middle there and realistically, we probably should have put that in the bottom right hand corner. So quickly just heading into our floating button, if we put a spacer above our navigation link and put our HStack inside a VStack with a spacer above it, then that should push it into the bottom right hand corner. Cool, so getting back to making our date scroller work, right now we are just displaying a full list of all task items that are created. And realistically, we wanna be filtering it based on the date selected. So if a task item has a due date of the 31st of July, we want to show it here. But if we scroll back to yesterday, we only want to show task items that were due yesterday. So up until this point, we've just been using the fetch request that comes straight out of the box when you create a new Core Data Swift project. But we're going to actually comment it out completely and write our own. If we head into our date older, we are going to create a published variable called task items. And this is gonna be an array of task items which we're just gonna initialize to be empty. And now where we're getting errors saying that we have commented out our task item array in our task list view, we're gonna use our date holder task items instead. So in our delete items, as well as our for each. Cool, so we can head back into our date holder now that we've gotten rid of all of those error messages. And below our init, we're gonna create a function calling it fetch task items. And our fetch task items is gonna require NSManage object context, and it's gonna return an array of task items. And inside here, we're gonna say do, and then return try context fetch. And then for our fetch, we're gonna create a function calling it daily tasks fetch and then we're gonna cast whatever we fetch to our task item array. And as we've added the keyword try, we are going to add in our catch where we're gonna catch any errors. And I'm just gonna copy this fatal error message and actually it doesn't like it being called NS error. So I'm just gonna call it unresolved error. Now we need to create our daily tasks fetch. So this is gonna be an NS fetch request of our task item. We're gonna say let request is equal to task item fetch request and then we're just gonna return that request. So we need to add two things to our request. We want it to give it a sort of sort order as well as how we wanna filter the request so that we don't just get every task item that's ever been created. So let's do the sort of filtering first, so the predicate. So we're gonna create a function calling it predicate, which returns an NS predicate. And we're gonna return the format where our due date needs to be greater than or equal to our first variable. As well, our due date needs to be less than our second variable. And so to do this, we're gonna say, let's start equal to our calendar start of day from our date. And so that date is whatever is selected by our date scroller. And you might be thinking, why do we need two dates? Couldn't you just say due date is equal to selected date? But we actually wanna account for the time and a direct comparison of dates would require the times to be the same as well. So we've got our selected date at essentially midnight of the night before or one minute past midnight. I'm not sure exactly when, but the start of the day. And then we're just gonna do end is one day more than our start date. And then we can pass through our NS predicate, both of our dates. So it's gonna put the first date in the greater than or equal to and the second one in our less than. And then we just need to cast both of those dates to NS date and add some downcasting or I couldn't quite work this out, but basically 
thought there were some optional values in there, but we just want to, we know that they're there. So we are just going to force open them. Cool. So now with our predicate all finished, we can just say request predicate is equal to our predicate function. And then we're going to create a function for our sort order. So just calling that a private function. And this is going to return NS sort descriptor. And we're going to say let completed date sort equal to a new NS sort descriptor. So an NS sort descriptor takes two variables. The first one being a key path, which we can just type task item and then our attribute. So in this case, completed date, and then whether or not we want to sort it ascending or descending. So I'm just going to say true to ascending, and we're going to return an array of our completed sort date. And we could just leave it at that. And it would sort our list only on completed date, but we actually want to use three different sort. And so it's going to say first sort by completed date, and then it's going to sort by whether or not there is a time. And then the thirdly, it's going to sort by due date. So we're just going to change the next one to schedule time. So the Boolean, and then the final sort is going to be our due date. We just need to pass into our array, the next two sort orders. And so the, the order that you put it in that array is important. And then in our daily tasks fetch, we're just going to say request sort descriptors is equal to our sort order. Cool. And the final thing left to do is in our init, we just want to set our task items equal to our function that fetches our task items and we pass it through our context. Cool. So testing this out now, we can see that we have fetched some task items, but when we scroll through our dates, uh, it doesn't seem to be making any difference. Our fetch task items is still only ever being called once. So what we're going to do is refactor this into its own function, just calling it refresh task items, which takes a context and it just assigns our task items to our fetch task items. And then inside our move dates, we're going to call that refresh task items as well. We're going to head into our save context. And every time we make a change to a task item, we are going to refresh our task item list. So now if we scroll through, you can see our task items are changing. And if we make any changes to the list, so this one, we're going to move the time. And I think with the slightly longer name, it's sort of bunched down onto two lines, which I don't think looks necessarily that great. So we're gonna head into our task cell and just put everything inside a H stack. And that should just put everything on one line. So we've learned how to filter and sort a list using a fetch request. But what if we wanted to filter the list once again, even further and put that in the user's hands. So let them only look at items that are you know, overdue or only look at the completed items or only look at the items that are still left to do. For this, we're gonna create a button in the top right-hand corner, which lets you select from a bit, bunch of different uh, filter options. Cool, so to start off our filter options, we're actually going to head into the model and create a new Swift file. We're gonna call this task filter. Our, we're gonna import Swift UI and our task filter is actually gonna be an enum. So I'm just gonna type enum task filter, which is of type string. We're gonna create a case called all, one which is non-completed, one which is completed, and one which is overdue. And we're gonna create a static variable, which is called all filters, which is just gonna return uh, in the order that we want them to be displayed, uh, an array of task filters. And so I'm just gonna return uh, first non-completed, then completed, overdue, and finally all. All is equal to all, non-completed, we're gonna give it a name of to do, so that's what the user is gonna see is the string. Uh, completed, we're just gonna call completed, and overdue, overdue. Now inside our task list view, we can remove this commented out fetch because we don't need that anymore. We're gonna remove the edit button and change the placement to be confirmation action. Inside the toolbar item, we're gonna introduce a picker. The picker is gonna have a no name to start with, and we're gonna create a state variable which we're gonna call selected filter. And it is gonna be initially equal to our non-completed task filter. And our selection is gonna be the binding value of our state filter. And we're gonna give that a bit of animation. Cool, so our picker is gonna have a for each inside of it. And it's gonna go through all of our filters. Uh, the ID is going to be self and our filter in. So each one of the filters, we're gonna uh, have just a bit of text with the raw value of the enum. So in this case, the string that we gave each of our filters. So the filter name. Cool, so just giving this a quick test, you can see the initial value is our to do, and then we can select all of our other options. So we're gonna create a function here, which is called filtered task items. And at the bottom, we're just gonna return our date holder task items. 
So that's when there is no filter applied. And so yeah, our filtered task items is gonna return an array of task item. And we're gonna remove our date holder task items and we're gonna put in our filtered task items instead. And then we're gonna put in above our task items, we're gonna say selected filter is equal to our completed task filter. We wanna return our date holder task items and we're gonna call the filter keyword. And then for all of them, we're gonna say if it's completed, we wanna filter them to be the ones displayed. And we're gonna do the same thing for not completed, just adding an exclamation mark. So saying not completed, we're gonna do one for overdue, very much the same and putting the wrong bracket here. So just fixing that up. Cool, so let's build our to-do list and test out our filter. At the moment, we've got just to-do items and we can try completed as well as overdue. And if we go back to to-do, as well as checking in all. If we select on to do and then select an item, it then automatically hides it from the view because it's no longer valid in our filtered list. So there you have it. There's two different ways to filter a Swift UI list. One using core data and fetch specs. We got to use a sort order for that one as well. And the second option was just using a Swift UI picker, which we had a bunch of different filter options and we just filtered the list based on the selected filter. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you did, consider giving the video a like and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Cheers.